They're dry, got all the other bits that need, well some of them that need painting, so let's paint it, switch the top filter off. Another day, very exciting brassy bits. The other one of these is missing because when I sprayed it, I noticed little specks of dust that had materialised from absolutely nowhere lying around here. So I had to sand it and respray it. Perfection is my watchword. Also, I did some more work on the thing that holds the PIR sensors, which was to cut an offset hole for an 8mm pipe in the tube that looks like it connects it up. And I used my lovely old sliding vice thing on the pillar drill. I got this years and years ago when I, a different pillar drill actually, but I used this with, what was it, milling machine parts in to cut some slots in a load of metal components that I needed to do. And having one of these saved having to get a milling machine it worked fairly well. I thought, now I've got all the bits for the clock ready, I thought I could engrave the two dials. And I, all the other engravings, I, I fill in these with 0.1 mm, 0.01 millimetre lines apart and then get it to cut quickly and lightly. I hadn't got round to doing that for these when I designed them, so I've left them as they are, which means that you get raster engraving going backwards and forwards. It takes ages, but does look very nice, I will show you. Here we are. You can see it's a very, very slow process. I think the, the laser moves are some ridiculous amount between each pass. As you can see, there we are, at one hour, 17 minutes and 24 seconds. So once it's, it's getting there, once it's finished doing that, it'll then go around and just quickly cut the holes out for those lenses, weather forecast predicting lenses, and the heel for the clock in the middle, I hope, and the outside. And then I'll clean it and we'll have another look at them. It is very exciting indeed. And as always, my preferred clock face enclosure thing is Vertig from Ikea, which I think, because I bought the last 10 at the Wembley one a few years ago, because I was really concerned that they were going to stop selling them, and I designed all the outside and the shapes and everything else, and they were really good. You've seen previous ones. In fact, um, I've used the inside of this for the... Um, steampunk time zone clock, the innards of which are sitting there waiting for Erin to tell me how big, well Erin's carpenter to tell her how big the actual final cupboard door where this is going to sit is going to be. So it's just waiting for the great day of resurrection there. Just remembered what I was doing. Here's the end of the PIR sensor holder and it's got this really annoying stamped company logo and name and things it's not good enough so I'm putting them on the lathe and I made this spinny thing which is just a large um, bearing so I can shove that up to reduce the chance of this flying off as I do it I've got a nice rounded cutter in the lathe I'll just skim that along to take off that to make it look nice I can't really show you that because it is so cramped around here, but you get the drift. Oh, exciting. I've just heard it finish its raster engraving and start to cut bits out. So, I've got to film that. Too good to miss. Oh, good. Lovely. There's a little hole for the sensor that works out when the hour hand goes past because it's an opto-reflective sensor because I spent ages fiddling around investigating the radio controlled clock movement and it didn't have any way of outputting an hour chime signal so I had to use the next best thing. I could have used a magnet and a reed switch but that would have added mass to the arms and I didn't want to risk doing that. Right, anyway. 
go out. And today, in order to try and avoid all the Netflix and Amazon own brand rubbish films, absolutely appalling drivel, are we going to watch Everest? No. Evil Dead? No. Everybody loves Ryan. No. Ah, Event Horizon, my, one of my favourite horror films, science fiction horror. I have to say, it's so enjoyable making things up out of different bits of plastic and fittings and laser cut stuff. Really is, and you know, when I glued it by dripping the glue in, sanding the back so it's all smooth, it's all cleaned up on the lathe, it's just fantastic. I was going to glue these bits in, or this bit in, that supports the PIR sensor, and I noticed that these PIR sensors, the capacitors are slightly too far out and it doesn't sit properly. So I'm going to, while I'm painting these, or this drawing, I will go ahead and redesign this to make it a little bit larger. I think it's worth doing. I see, Geoffrey. Beautifully cleaned up. Clock dials, absolutely splendid. What I'm going to do now is to glue the uh, lenses in the back. So I support them so the lens holes are clear. I'm also going to try and reduce, because I've been touching this to clean it, and may have some grease from my fingers, oils and things, um, around the inside of these, and I don't want that white mist to appear when I drip the super glue on, so I'm going to lay them all in, and then put them under the blower, and just a small movement of air I've found actually stops it, disturbs it from settling, this, this funny sort of misty stuff. Here are the lenses, and again, I'm going to go and wash my hands to get rid of some more grease, actually. Right, clean hands. I'm just going to try and avoid touching this. I could use the um, cotton gloves that I've got, but by the time you put them on... Ooh, tap, 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 tap. Look at that. And these lenses are designed for LED lights. That's what they're advertised as, anyway. And I've cut the holes out just the right size, so enjoyable. When you design something where things as a piece of fluff get out of it. Where did fluff come from? My beard falling out, I don't know. Now when you design something, it's so nice to design it to be easy to manufacture, assemble. It really does, it really does, it really is. Because, you know, like, remember in the... Um, Oh, the chronograph, the clock, all those numbers, the hour numbers. And I started off making them round and then realised, hold on, this is going to be almost impossible. So made them uh, pear-shaped in a little rebate and then it turned what would have been an absolutely hideous job into a nice one. The same with this. Would might have to line these up, put some glue on, line them up really carefully, risk ruining everything on a repeated basis. And, um, whereas this way, I can just drop everything everywhere. Anyway, I'll get on with that and then drip the glue on. There we are, all done. And so I've just put three drops around it, being careful not to, because sometimes as you squeeze the tube, it splutters out and splashes a little bit onto the back of the lens, which is something you want to avoid, obviously. Um, and then it just runs around underneath, and I'll leave that still, and it'll stick perfectly. What I was going to say was, I love lenses and things like that, because, and the Victorians, it was very reminiscent of Victorians and steampunk designs, machines, because they couldn't amplify signals and things. If they're having some readings they needed to read accurately, they would just have to magnify whatever signal was available to them with optically and mechanically, which is lovely rather than the hideous um, digital stuff today. Bah! You can't beat the proper moving parts. I have to say, actually, even from the back, these look absolutely beautiful. The way the lenses catch the light and cause the distortion. What a joy. This is just so enjoyable. I haven't got words, the vocabulary necessary to express the joy that this brings. Lovely stained wooden base, and then putting the parts that are now sprayed, slowly arranging them. There's, oh, look at that, it's just gorgeous. That goes on there. And I'm slowly going to be now be able to, I'll, get the, I'll screw these down, 
I might actually do the, no, I'll screw these down as, as it goes with the brass screws and then slowly work around and getting on with other bits and pieces. It just, because you, you finally see at this stage how it's going to look, what it's going to look like and how it's coming together. Oh joy. One vertig clock. You turn it over and I assume, as I say, I don't think they make these anymore, but I'm sure they do sell lots that are similar. And there's three of these spring clips, really nice. You can put it back together really easy, take it apart really easily, fabulous. And this bit just lifts out. And there's the body, the spun body and the glass front, which I will place carefully as a door. And there's the bit you want. And then you just pull the hands off. The only annoying bit, I shall show you the annoying, well, hang on, let me just take that apart. There you are, you get a three clock movement, so with every steampunk machine enclosure thing. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't it look lovely? So that fits in there, I've drilled them out and in the end I used the fly cutter again because it worked perfectly. I've cut that off and that leaves space for getting the opto sensor thing in there, infrared thing. And it just, oh, that's going to look so nice. Before I do anything else, don't get carried away, I'm going to spray these brass around the edges. Otherwise it, it just doesn't look right if it's not. You can see the reflections, it just, it looks gorgeous. Look at this. Got it together, sprayed the inside of that, it's just so reflective and shiny. And I've got this together now, very, very enjoyable. There's the little bit that houses the opto-reflective detector thing that triggers the um, sounds and flutes and things every hour, because as I said, the uh, radio control clock movement doesn't have anything like that. And here's the back, all screwed beautifully together. And there's the bit on the back where the detector goes. And what I've done is I have two of them. Here we are. I might have to zoom in. Come on, there. There's the minuscule detector, which I might just catch the, catch the light and see if you can. Oh yeah, there we are. You can see the titchy little infrared LED, titchy little infrared detector. In that package and I wire it up 180 ohm resistor to run the LED and another 5k6 resistor to um, pull the output up that's right so when it switches on it pulls it down that the Arduino can then read so in effect it's wired up like that there are wired up like that and what it actually is is the LED and the um, photo diode transistor whatever right and that, for reference, is RS part 194-4018. Very useful. What happens is this pushes into that. Like, oops, like so. And then that just sits. Catch the light. Possibly not. But that's just sitting in there. And Oh yeah, there we are. When the hour hand comes round, sorry, the minute hand, as it goes past it's reflective on the back and it just reflects the um, infrared beam and tells the Arduino that the hour has struck. And I was concerned about the um, the radio control clocks uh, being used in America and I was pointed out, I, I emailed the kind of gentleman who's ordered this and asked him how do you, how do you allow for um, the th different time zones in America, and he wrote back and said he wasn't actually in America at all. He was in Somerset in the UK. I think I made the mistake because I had just recently, in earlier that day, been discussing pinball machines and um, barometric prognosticators with an American gentleman in America, and I just assumed the two were sort of somehow linked. Anyway, that's great because I know this will work now. So also, I'd, I've forgotten when when you get these, there's a little pin in the back that holds them at 12 o'clock so that you know where to put the hands on and then you put the hands on, once they're on you then pull the pin out and it's clever isn't it, very clever way of setting it up because it has to know and these are amazing, they've got motors, little stepper motors inside so when you first switch them on the hands go around really fast and, until they find the time 
very clever. As I say, you know, I in investigated when I first got these, all these contacts and the hope that there was some sort of hourly trigger output, but there were, wasn't. I don't know what they all do. Um, something very clever, I'm sure. Anyway, let's get on. Right, I fancy making the power on indicator, which sits on there. And I've cut out a couple of 10mm bits, five, three, a couple more engraved bits, and I can start them, which would be great. And also, the bits have started arriving. Look, look at this. It's one of the wireless, Oregon wireless um, weather detectors, and it senses uh, temperature and humidity, which is great, and that sits outside and transmits the information via the wireless link to the barometric prognosticator and some proper um, barometric pressure sensors that will actually fit in the machine itself. These are the proper ones. I did have some ones that I bought early on that were really cheap, nasty rip-off copies that didn't have the, all the capacitors and voltage um, regulators so that you could run it from 5 volts. after have to be run from 3.3 volts. So I've got one of those as well. Brilliant. Underneath the on indicator, there's also room for the dinger, which is another motor, um, which pulls the hammer back for the bell, rings the bell. And wanting to complicate everything, here's the engineering drawing for the little coupling that, uh, that joins a hammer, which is that, onto the end of the motor. Right, got all the bits done with the grub screws in, so you can see the grub screw that clamps that. I've got these two dinger holders made up of um, this spring steel, one millimeter spring steel, and I've got the hammer which I'm going to make from two M5 brass dome bolts that just basically clamp on, clamp together like that. I'll get that assembled and then show you what I mean. There we are, finished. So that will then fit onto the motor spindle, tighten that, that then hangs down and supports the hammer. The lovely thing is, and what I think is really important about designing these machines, is that every little bit of them is nice to look at and interesting. You know, it would be so easy to make some sort of really simple, cheap, laser cut hammer thing, but this has taken hours to make, but it just looks, you know, these dome nuts are beautiful. And having the little grub screws and things here, it's just it just makes it look really nice. Lovely. Right, let's try and get things screwed onto the baseboard. I think I'd better stop. It's getting late, I'm getting a bit tired, and I'm getting completely carried away, and I do need to put another video together, otherwise I end up with hundreds of files, and not a clue what to do. Right, look, we have things happening. We can now see the assembled on and off illuminated thing here, and the motors mounted in the back, the recess in the back, and the hammer goes back and forth, and the bell sits somewhere around there. That's looking lovely. And I've got this bit mounted. This is the bit where the tap goes on front. So that goes on the front, and in order for it to actually be able to, as I said, before I understood and knew that you could even get small encoders that were reasonably priced, um, using, ah, hang on a minute. I want to be good news, the tripod is going everything. Right, I was using one of those, if you remember. That's mounted on the back and sticks up through this copper pipe, which these um, gate valves wouldn't normally have. And then inside there's a linkage to link that to the twiddly bit on the tap. That's done. And that lovely loop over copper pipe, which you can't see because I'm looking in the wrong place. Uh, lovely looping over pipe which you can get, standard plumbing fitting, and that actually allows the pipe to go over the um, crank slider thing that's going backwards and forwards. So, that's all coming on beautifully, dare I say it. It is so enjoyable starting to screw things down. Thank you very, very much for watching. Hope it's been of interest, useful top tips and things. Um, please do like, subscribe and other stuff that I meant to say. Uh, thank you very much again. Hopefully, I'll oh, see you next time, next time. Getting the clock, oh, it's just, oh, I do need to sleep at some point. It's almost enjoyable.